In this video, what I'd like to do is talk about the semiconductor space. I want to go back to the ETFs that I mentioned in the previous video, the semiconductors, the SOXL and SOXX. Those are the two semiconductor uh, ETFs that people are really looking at buying right now when things are down. So I'm going to give my opinion. Um, and remember, of course, this is not financial advice. Here's what I'm thinking. If you are not willing to look into very specific stocks, uh, the ETFs are probably a good place to go to uh, for an overall, just a general semiconductor ETF is a good place to go to. So let's take a look at SOXX and X SOXL and see if it might be a good time to get into it or maybe not. Right. Well, first let's take a look at SOXL. And right here, I'd like to start looking at the big picture. So a year ago from March, when the stock market really did take a significant downturn because of very well-known reasons, we could see that the stock has, the, this ETF, the SOXL, has just parabolic, just went parabolic, it just exploded. It went from as low as right in this region around $4 post split adjusted from about $4 to almost $48 so right around there so even so if you bought it anywhere <laughs> congratulations that's wonderful if you bought it even for 6 for 8 for 10 for 12 for 16 for 18 for 20 it's okay if you're still kind of holding the bag at 35 you're still doubling or tripling your money which is amazing However, if you bought it at the top or you bought it at about 48, which is totally fine, and it went down, it's still not the end of the world because sooner or later, I think nothing has changed. Sooner or later, we are going to see new highs. So let's take a look at this. Let's get a little bit closer here. Let's see what exactly what's going on. So the big question is, is it time right now to get back into it? If you're not into it right now, if you missed out and you're thinking, I don't want to pick specific stocks in semiconductor world, I just want to pick a SOXL or SOXX. And this one, there was a stock split, so it's a lot cheaper uh, per share to get in, even though that's a whole other topic of what you're really buying. Am I looking at this and thinking, okay, is it a good time to get back in? Is there a trend reversal? Or are we still headed to see lower lows? So what I'm going to do is turn on the, the simple moving averages, the SMAs. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about the SMAs. So here I have three lines. The orange one on the bottom right here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw on top of it so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So this orange one right here, that's the 200-day moving average. This one above it is the 50-day moving average. And the one above that is the 10-day moving average. Now, these are simple moving averages. And for beginners in the stock market, this these are crucial to take a look at. In my opinion, this is what I was doing about 10 years ago. I was looking at these as my guides on the trends because we're always trying to write a trend. We're trying to be on the trend, not against the trend. So these, so if we look back here where I drew these three little blue lines, everything was wonderful at that time. Things were going up, the trend was still going up, everything is great. However, if we look at right over here, right there, um, if we look right over there, we can see that we tested that the 10, uh, tested the 50, the 10 SMA tested the 50 SMA. And this was kind of like a signal. It was like, maybe this is a trend reversal, but no, it was not. And right here, it was actually going up again. And people were like, wait a minute. So maybe, maybe it's not going to be a trend reversal, but it was because right in this here region, we could see that it did dip and it dipped quite a lot right here it went all the way to 200 day moving average. Now, let's talk a little bit about the 200 day moving average. I love the 200 day moving average. I like the 21 day moving average, the 50, the 20, the nine. Why is it so important? Well, because they can be, for, for beginners, this is very important to understand because the 200 moving average 
any one of these averages could serve as a resistance it could bounce off it and go down or it could be a support the 200 moving average is usually for me is a good indicator of support and all stocks this is one thing if you take anything away from this video as a beginner stocks will always come back sooner or later stocks etfs they will always come back to their 200 simple moving average they will always come back no matter how high they are no matter how amazing they are sooner or later they will touch it again and usually that is a great time to buy because that's when they will bounce off of it and go back up unless something crazy happens and it keeps going down and it might go down a bit and then it'll go back up but if history repeats itself 200 moving average is a wonderful time to buy in and you will see other people because everyone's looking at more or less the same uh, SMA. So let's get back into it. So, okay, so right here, it went a little bit below the 200 moving average, but right after that, it moved back up and up we went. And then what happened just recently, right on Thursday, boom we retested that 200 moving average one more time we retested that 200 moving average okay so on friday we had a wonderful green day you know and then today it's kind of down again so what am i looking at what specifically am i looking at so to me what is important let me delete some of these so i can clearly see what i'm talking about so to me what would be important if i was considering getting back into these would be to see these simple moving average stacked on top of one another, just like we described in the beginning. We want to see the 200 at the bottom, the 50 above it, and the 10 above that. When that happens, when we've got the 200, the 50, and the 10, we know there is a reversal. And usually the ETFs like this one, they don't reverse a lot. Like we live in crazy times right now, so it might reverse anything could happen but when we see clearly that at the bottom we've got the 200 we've got the 50 above that and the 10 above that usually that's a good indicator that we're headed upwards right now we're not there yet the good news is that yes we do have the 200 on the bottom we're above that we bounced off of that we're above that but we the 10 moving average is below the 50 so we have yet to clear that as of right now and this could be a good time to buy theoretically when we look back at this this could be a good time to buy because technically we're above that as i'm saying this it moves down a little um, but i would not get into it personally until i see these three stacked up and this is the same story with soxx we are technically technically we are above they are stacked the right way you could see right here with soxx is actually a little bit better than this excel because right here we've got the 200 moving average this one right here this is our 50 moving average and this one right there is our 10 moving average so they are stacked correctly however however there could be a quick reversal back just like what we saw right in this region right here there's a reversal back so if we were just going off of just the sma right here we we could have been like oh it's time to buy right there but what happened it went down right after that so for me personally if i was to be going into soxx and xoxl soxl right here I would wait for these to get some room in between them so that there's some breathing room because right now it looks like they're stacked right on top of each other if you look over here it looks like they're stacked on top of each other so what i would do myself let's first let's talk about this what i would do personally is i would wait for them to separate a little bit so you've got the 200 the 50 and the 10 and they're kind of separated so it's clearly going upwards i would look at the candles i would see if they're strong candles you know it's okay to have some red days that's actually wonderful the market needs to breathe that's that's totally fine but the trend the sma which is a lagging indicator this is of the past we've got some separation and they're kind of headed upwards that's how you know this trend is going to move upwards and i think that's a wonderful thing to wait for now let me make a quick disclaimer let me just tell you i am not in sox 
nor am I in SOXL. And the reason for that is because I like to pick my own stocks. I like to pick the actual companies that are in them. Um, if you have not seen, like I mentioned before, if you have not seen what's inside SOXX and SOXL, you can see the videos that I've already posted on this channel, specifically what's inside these semiconductors ETFs by searching for Lava Trades, uh, semiconductors, um, and you will see exactly in that video what's inside of them. What I like to do is pick very specific companies, very specific stocks, and these stocks are usually not in these ETFs. They're actually outside of those stocks. So what I'd like to do in the next video coming up, uh, probably either tomorrow or day after, depending if I finish it up, what I'd like to do is actually give you a list. Right now, the list is about 20 stocks that I have in the semiconductor space. And what I'd like to do is narrow it down to about 10 and, and reveal that list of about 10 semiconductor stocks. And then I'll go ahead and actually narrow it down even further in that video to my top picks. And then what I'll do is subsequently, I'll make a playlist and dive into very specific stocks that are from that list. And we'll take a very deep dive how I do research, what I look for, where I get the information, and you'll be able to follow along and kind of learn how to fish yourself, basically. For As a beginner, you, you might be able to see that. And I'd love to see your feedback, hear your feedback too, and let me know what you think about some of my picks. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Come back anytime. Good to see you and have a great one. Bye.